Well, I've got myself a new sketchbook because I filled my other one up. And as I always say, I'm always doodling and sketching and doing things. And this is a large one. I haven't had one this size before. Normally, I go for the smaller ones. I did this on my last sketchbook and I loved it. And it sticks out quite a lot. So I want to cover this one. And I'm going to do this in quite mythical things. So I've got all these moulds from my resin work and I'm going to make some mythical things with it. Now, what I'm going to cast those with is my moulding paste that I made. And if you want to know how to make that, I'll link it at the end of this video for you to check out. But this time I want to make up my moulding paste with a little bit more fibre in it to give it some, not necessarily texture, but some strength. Now I could use resin creep for this, but this is going to get knocked about an awful lot, dropped and all sorts of things. And I think this will work better for what I'm trying to make here. And all I'm using here now is some toilet roll. Ripping it up a little bit. Now I want quite a bit in here. And this is going to give the fibres that I need for my paste, I believe. A bit more than that. And that should be enough. And I'm going to add some of my mixture to it that I use to make my paste with. And let that soak in there for about 10-15 minutes. I'm going to give it a good stir around to ensure that it's all stuck in there and it's all being soaked. A bit more needed, I think. And that'll break down fairly quickly into a pulp. Well, that's all gone to a lovely pulp now. Look, it's all broken down and it's going to be perfect. So it just means putting in the rest of my ingredients now and getting this to a nice stiff consistency. I don't want it too light and fluffy because if I do, it's not going to cure up as well as I want it to cure up. It will be amazing how much difference that paper will make to this. And it dries really well. You can pipe with this and all sorts of things with this as well, which is great. It makes a big difference. You do need to make sure it's thoroughly mixed up. All I need to do now is push this into my moulds and then let it dry. I'm using a knife here because that way I can push it right down into all the little nooks and crannies. I don't mind if I have a little bit of overlap because you'll find that you can cut this with a pair of scissors if you need to and trim it all up and tidy it all up. Although once you've got to that stage, what you can do is take some water in a cup like this. It's a bit of a dirty cup, I know, but it doesn't matter. That's had something in it. <laughs> Never want to throw anything away, me. And then you can smooth that out over the top like that. And then just pop it to one side and leave that to dry. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with all these little moulds as well. And then I'll show you what they're like before I demould them. I left these overnight to dry out and they should be completely dry now and they should come out of this mould. Oh yeah, look how easy are they coming out. You want to be a little bit delicate with them at this stage because if they are even slightly damp, you don't want to be breaking them. I'm possibly not going to be using all of these pieces on this. I've made them so that I can play around with them on the book cover to see where I like them and which ones I like. But it has taken on a lot of that detail, as you can see, which is excellent. Well, I've decided these are the pieces I'm going to be using and this is where I'm going to be putting them. But before I do that, what I want to do is put a string border all the way around this book because then that will give me a nice raised finish at the end when I've covered all this and painted it. All I'm going to do is measure how much I need, roughly, because I can still cut it afterwards, and then soak it in some white glue for a couple of minutes until it's ready for me to put on. And I'm not going to glue these on yet until I finish the string piece. And because this is a board, all this will glue on there really well and super easy and give a great adhesion ready for the next stage. So I'm just going to run this through my fingers, get rid of some of that extra glue that's on there, and then I can pop it on this. I want an even size border going all the way around, and I also want it to be as straight as I can possibly get it as well. See how nicely that goes on there? And that'll glue on there ever so strong. And I'm going to do my join in the middle here rather than at the corner so I can get a curved corner on this. Because if not, what will happen is it will end up being a square corner and I don't really want a square corner. 
And then I can just pull these two together across there like that, square them off a bit, and then leave that to dry for about five or ten minutes before I do the next stage. So my string's nearly dry on there, and as you can see, I've gone all the way around, done a few little circles and some wiggly bits, which should show up really nicely when I've finished. And I'm now ready to put these on. I'm going to be using a wood glue rather than a normal white glue for this. And the reason is I find the wood glue is waterproof and it also sticks really, really well. These are never going to come off. Brush that all the way over so it's in contact everywhere. And then put that down in the middle or roughly the middle. I mean, I'm eyeballing this. I think that's about right. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of them on exactly the same way. And then once they're all on, I'm going to leave this then for at least two hours to dry. Well, they're all glued on there nice and tight now, and they're not going to go anywhere. But before I do the next stage, I want to seal all these because they will be a little bit porous. And I'm using a waterproof wood glue here which is just a white waterproof glue and I'm painting over everything giving it a really good coat so the next stage will dry a lot quicker and neater I meant to say earlier as well adding that toilet paper fibers to this has made a massive difference. This is really quite strong and not at all brittle. This won't take long to dry. It will probably be dry in about 10 minutes and quicker if I go over it with the hairdryer as well. Well, that's dry enough now and that's given that a really good seal. And what I've got here is I've cut a square out of some packaging paper that came with one of my Amazon boxes. And I'm going to cover this in that first. Now, normally I would do this in Bit. But actually, I want this to be in one full sheet like this. I do want it to have some wrinkles and creases in it, and I'll put those in as we go. First of all, what I've got is my good old trusty white glue here, and I'm going to be putting quite a bit on here, coating everything. And this is white glue that I've added water to to make it a little bit runnier than it would normally be. Making sure I'm getting into all my bits and pieces, and that's why I've got a larger brush. But even so, even though this is a larger brush, it is still quite a soft brush, so it's not going to cause any problems, hopefully, when I go to put the actual paper on. So once I'm happy, I've got that completely coated everywhere then it's time to put this on now I want to kind of line it up with that edge first there because that's as far as I want it to go and then I'm going to wet this with this glue again all over this paper until I've got that pushing down where I want it. And this won't take long to do. Once you get it going, it then starts to take on that shape that you've got there. That was why I put that string around as well, because I wanted it to have that kind of look that it had got a good border on it. Give that a little spray with some water. Go back over it with a bit more glue and then leave it for about five or six minutes while that soaks into that paper before I start to get in and put the details in it. I will use a damp sponge, go over this and push in some of the details here. Trying to get rid of as much of that trapped air that's under there as possible using this sponge. Now, where places like this have come through, we don't have to worry about that. That's just giving us details that we need. Because what will happen is, once that's dry and we go over and do our paint effect, you're never going to see that. This is all dry now, and it's dry both on the outside and on the inside. And I've folded that over. Now, I'm not too bothered about that looking a little bit rough, because that page is going to be glued over there to neaten it all up at the end anyway. So now it's time to paint it. Before I paint it, I am going to put some paper underneath it, because if not, I'm so messy. <laughs> and I've unfolded the book as well. And I'm just going to paint the whole of the back in that colour. Then I will let that dry. And I want to make sure when I'm painting this, I get into all the little nooks and all the little crannies of these moulds. 
Well, this is all dry and lovely now, and it's time to put some color washes on it. And I'm going to use quite a dark color wash to start with, which is a mixture of burnt umber and black. And I'm going to make it very watery. And I'm going to put it on and then wipe it off of the top areas before I let it dry. And I'm going to brush that all over fairly quickly because it will dry fairly quickly if you're not careful. And I'm going to give it a quick spray. I'm going to leave that for about 30 seconds. And then I've got some cloth and I'm going to go over it now and remove it. Not actually rubbing it, more doing, as you can see, dabbing it off because I don't want to rub it and create a mark where I'm rubbing it. And then what I'll do is once I'm happy with that, I'll let that dry and then I'll do the next stage. Now that's dry, I'm gonna go over it with a few more color washes and this one is just a burnt umber and I'm gonna be doing exactly the same. And then once the burnt umber one is dry, I'm gonna lighten up the burnt umber using a little bit of red and some white. Do another one and then do a color wash with just some red. And then I'll show you what it all is gonna look like before for I do the very final touch to give it that bit of what I would consider to be sparkly glamour. I've finished my colour washes now. I love the way that's coming out. But I made a big mistake. And so make sure you don't follow the same mistake I did. I forgot to put my bit of paper in here and my colour wash has run onto my pages. Now it's not a massive issue, but if you're gonna sell these books and things like that, you do want those pages to be nice and clear, but this is for my own use. So be careful not to do that. <laughs> a piece of paper or a plastic bag or something in there will stop that happening. Now it's time for a quick dry brush. I've mixed up a orange by just adding yellow and red. I'm gonna fill tips of my brush here. I don't want it to be heavy, this dry brush in. So I'm catching just the tops in these areas to give it a little bit of a highlighted finish. So don't have clumps of paint on your brush. And now I'm gonna do just one more little brush over with a lighter orange. So I'm going to add some more yellow to it. I'm not gonna add any white because I don't want this to turn into a pinky color. And again, I'm just gently going over these raised bits, which will bring out more of those details as you'll be able to see in a second. So my intention has always been to add some gold leaf to this on these raised bits I put on the outside. And I think that's gonna look great. If it doesn't, then I'll have to live with it, but I think it will. I'm using my gold leaf glue here. Now you don't need a lot of this and you do need to let it dry. It only needs to dry for about 10, 15 minutes. When it's gone completely clear, you know it's dry. And then it will be sticky and the gold leaf will adhere to it. Now I don't want a perfect finish on this gold leaf because it is looking more like an older book which is what I wanted. If we've got any slight misses where I put the glue or some that are a little bit more further away than others then that is all the better for me. So it's time now to put the gold leaf on and I'm going to be putting it on as I normally do using a soft brush to brush it on to get it all over everywhere that I want it. And it should, at this stage, only stick to where you've put the glue. Well, that's all dry now and ready for its final coat of varnish. And this is a polyacrylic semi-gloss varnish. I'm not gonna go over it too heavy, but just enough to protect that gold leaf and also the acrylic paint. So if any water or anything's dropped on it, it's not gonna cause any damage to that acrylic paint. I will give it a second coat once this coat is fully dry and then it is completely finished. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I absolutely love how it's come out. It really has come out much better than I expected. I look forward to hearing what you think. Please boot that like button, it really helps my videos to get out there. And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and experiments. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye.